Computers are amazing, but they do cause issues and they cause serious issues in society. And if we ignore those issues, if we just let them fester, then they can cause some real harm. So what we need to do is have a discussion about some of the problems that computers cause in society. And then once we're aware of them, maybe we can do something about them. So let's talk about all these different classifications of issues, ethical, cultural, privacy and environmental. We are talking about problems here. So what we'll do is we'll go through each one, give a bit of a definition for it, and then give an example problem or two for it, and then hopefully become clear exactly what these terms mean. So let's just talk through what an ethical issue is. This is an issue where we are having to ask ourselves, is something morally right or wrong? So does it feel right to, to society or is it wrong? And this can really just come down to like a good feeling that what everybody in general sort of thinks might be right or wrong. Let's give you a quick example about this. Um, let's do social media. Okay, so social media is definitely a double-edged edged sword. It's caused uh, and it's been a massive driver for good, but it certainly has issues. And I know this because I work with teenagers who do not have any escape from it. So you've got the idea we've got smartphones and then you as a user are potentially available 24-7. So every hour of the day, every day of the week, if you are attached to your smartphone or if you have it near your bed, that causes problems because whilst things might be going fantastically well for you in school, what happens if you're not having a great day? What happens if you're having a bad time? What happens if you're getting bullied? It used to be that you could go home and at least switch off a little bit from that situation. You know, you'd be distanced from it. You'd have no contact with people from school for a while. You can reset, go in the next day. But now, no, smartphones are available. Social media is available. That means that somebody even got at 24-7. Is that causing serious mental health issues? And if it is, should we do something about it? Because then we're dividing society into two groups, those who can cope with social media and those that can't. So what do we do about that situation? How do we resolve it? Do we put limits on social media for everybody? Would that even work? I'm not sure. That's a definite ethical issue that we as a society need to work through, probably pretty quickly, actually. Culture then. So this is the idea that if we have something which becomes normal for usually a majority of people in society, um, then that's fine and good and they might find a new way to work or to live, but that might not work at all for a different group of society, uh, of people in that society. And, you know, there are some sort of, uh, I'm going to give a couple of examples of this. There's some things where we definitely, we cross uh, like uh, country lines on this, if that makes sense. So we've got like maybe website design is a really classic example of this. If I design my website and it's for a, I don't know, a product which becomes really popular, but then it only uses English, and it's meant to hit most of the world, then I've immediately caused an issue, haven't I? Because a lot of people can't read it. So that's, I've made an assumption maybe from my sort of culture, culture that everybody speaks English. But that is gonna stop um, a, the majority probably actually of the world from being able to access my website. And you might think, well, that can't really possibly happen, but actually computers have got a history of this. So when we uh, first put together computers, we had a character set called ASCII, which is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and it only covered English characters. So it immediately excluded a lot of the world from being able to use computers full stop. So it has happened before and it could happen again. So that's one sort of idea, the idea of website design only using English. If I then change that, maybe so it could use French, I could probably get away with it. If I then try to change it to Arabic, well, have I checked to see if my website works reading right to left as well as left to right? Because if you've ever seen the Arabic language, it reads the other way. You start over here on the right and you read to the left. So does my whole website design break down if I hadn't considered that? So that's one sort of thing to consider uh, when we're talking about cultural issues. But here's another one. There are probably two groups of society at the moment. Those who have access and are comfortable with using computers, so they have, have access to them or, or and, they're, and they're happy using them. And then there's those people who don't have access um, to computers easily and those who are not comfortable using them. And it's not fair to land both of those very distinct groups into this sort of uh, this, this half, but just for the purpose of this example I'm going to. If you imagine all your schoolwork had to be done and handed in on Google Classroom or something similar like that, so it had to be done on a computer, is that fair? What about this group here? How can they do that if they don't have access to a computer? How can they do that if they don't know how to use a computer? We can't create a society which 100% has to rely on the use of computers. There has to be an alternative way for doing things like, you know, getting passports or submitting schoolwork. Because if we do that, then we are leaving this group behind and it's a significant number of people. It's not fair on them. All right, so cultural, that's a cultural issue. If you found that video useful, 
please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.